Okay, so I've got a 0 0.03 here, which is going to do just fine. We're going to put it in the same basic position. soldering iron warm up here. I guess we can work on the other terminal. That's great. I think that's the only capacitor I need to worry about in here. The previous uh, person who worked on it did a good job replacing all these other ones. He might have missed that one because he didn't recognize it as a capacitor. I don't know. Place that uh, high voltage one in there. So there we are. So the, the last capacitor is done. Pretty sure now the radio is ready for alignment. And uh, I do have some alignment instructions. So to do the alignment, now I guess I have to realize uh, a lot of you watching this video are probably. Uh, car people more than your radio people so uh, you might not be so familiar with all this kind of stuff but uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to feed uh, some signals into the radio and use those signals to make some tuning adjustments inside the radio that are normally done at the factory once during the construction of the radio and generally there's a very low expectation that they would ever be uh, done again but when a radio has survived all the way from 1952 to 2015, there's a good chance that it does need a, an internal tune-up. A fairly straightforward thing to do. So that's what's next on my agenda. Alignment, and then uh, cleanup, we're done. Okay, well the next step on this uh, car radio, 1952 car radio, now that all the capacitors have been changed and checked, and the radio is actually working, uh, is to do the, line up, the alignment. And if one of the things I'd like to do with the alignment is monitor the AVC voltage. So let's take a look at the uh, schematic here. Now, the AVC voltage is developed in the detector tube, which is basically a diode. And uh, when you run an AC signal through a diode you get a DC output. The stronger the AC going in, the stronger the DC coming out. So here's the detector tube and there's a terminal right there it says DP. I'm pretty sure that's a, that means diode plate. 
So this little guy here, it's a small plate inside the uh, tube, or at least it's always pictured that way, uh, is the detector part or the rectifier of the signal that's coming through the, the radio. It'll develop a DC voltage here. And you, can, you can't get across the capacitor. I'm just going to trace it here and see if in fact it does. That's a megohm to ground, so that's as if that's not even there. Okay, here's a megohm. Okay, here's a fairly fair size capacitor here to ground. So this is probably the AVC capacitor. And this slows the action of the AVC, automatic volume control voltage. Let's keep going, see? Ah, okay, it goes through here and finds its way to the grid of this tube. Comes up through here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. Finds its way to the grid of that tube, so it's controlling these two tubes. Comes on through here, big resistor. Finds its way to the grid of this tube. So the AVC voltage developed in the detector is being applied to the grid of all these three tubes. And the idea is strong signal comes in. Uh, gets rectified here, big DC goes back, that DC is fed to the grids of these tubes, making them more negative. Grids go negative, tubes quiet down. So strong signal quiets down the tubes, and this is how the radio uh, automatically adjusts its uh, volume. And pretty much every radio does this, has this uh, design in it. Which is, if you didn't know, that's where the uh, when you tune between stations with an AM radio and you hear all that noise, that's because essentially the radio has turned the volume right up. All I got to do is connect the voltmeter to this point here, anywhere along here, anywhere ahead of this big one megohm resistor. And I should be able to read that voltage as it varies right here, and that's one, two, three, four on the SR7 tube. See if we can find that. Four on the SR7 tube. So I'm pretty sure this is the right tube. Let me double check here. Not that I ever make mistakes, but you never know. Uh, SR7. Right on the back wall. It's just yeah, right there. That's the tube. So pin number four. So let's see. That's one, two, Three, four. So four has a large resistor to ground. So right here. So all I got to do is get on that. I, I don't, don't want to go here. I got to be on this side of this little, little tiny resistor here. So I got to get down in there with a clip lead. But that's the point to monitor the AVC. So I'm going to set all the equipment up, and we'll get going on this. Okay, I think I got everything connected here. Let's see. We'll just go through it, kind of double check it. So first is the power. Let me switch to a better view here. Too. There we go. So the power is coming in on this red wire, six volts DC. This is the ground terminal I'm using for that. Just just a good spot to clip on. Then to monitor the AVC voltage I have my voltmeter, which is this voltmeter here, connected to that AVC point I found. Okay, so hopefully that'll work. Okay, and the lastly, uh, this is my signal generator output. And one terminal is grounded here, the other one is fed to the oscillator, or local oscillator grid, which I'll show you here on the schematic. So this is the local oscillator here. The output from the oscillator comes up here. Great big 10 meg resistor, it's as if it isn't there. Up here, right to the OG, oscillator grid. And if you notice, there's a resistor to ground here 2.2 mega ohms, and I was able to identify that in the radio. I'm not sure it's going to come over on the video, but there it is right there. And it's got the 
So I'm pretty sure I got everything hooked up correctly. Wait a minute. I think it's a good thing I double check these things. Oh, here. I'm looking at the wrong spot. Here, 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 here. <laughs> Bad thing I double check these things. There's a 22, 22, 22. Oh. I don't know what's going on here? This is uh, 22K. That's a, clearly that's a orange. 22K, but in the schematic here, it says uh, 22M. Uh oh, M. Okay, so M. <laughs> these older schematics, M, really it re uh, relates to the French term. Is good. We're ready to power up the radio. Check my voltage supply, it's set to 6 volts. The radio is currently off. Off. Let's get a, get a better view here. Ah, I don't have a speaker connected. Can't do this without a speaker. Shouldn't do this without a speaker. Shouldn't run these radios, uh, tube radios, without a speaker connected. So I'm going to connect up my shop speaker here. go. Now I think we're completely set. So, switch on the power. This meter is set to 15 volts full scale negative. So as the meter moves up, it's actually reading a negative voltage. And the signal generator is set way off right now. It's not set where it needs to be. That's fine. It's set to 1100 on the AM dial, which is fine for now. Uh, output, I'll turn it way down so the signal generator is not blasting into the radio. Um, because of where I've connected the signal generator, the local oscillator may be dead, may not be operating, which is really what I want. Let's switch it on. Set the uh, power supply up just a wee bit, so it's about 6.5 volts. Here I heard a little sound coming out of the speaker there. Let's turn it up. Good show. So now we'll dial the signal generator down to the IF frequency 262.5. And hopefully, when we get down there. 62. It's way down here. There we go. Watch the numbers here. Something should happen when we get to 262. Okay, nothing happened because I had the signal so low. Turn it up a bit. Go back across it again. Nothing. Let's go up another level here. Better make some sound this time. Two sixty two and a half. So it seems like it likes two sixty one a little better. My counter is not that accurate. It's not precise to the number. Oh, 
as clear sounding as I would like. Uh, watch the ABC voltage this time. Let me make the meter more sensitive. Watch it and see if it moves up and down. Nothing. I'm putting out a very strong signal here. I don't know what to think of that. No ABC motion at all. I'm expecting this meter to go up and down as we tune through it. So maybe I'll feed the uh, signal generator into a different grid in the mixer tube. I'll feed it into... Let's be pin number 8. Okay, pin number 8. So we'll turn down the signal generator so we don't have any surprises. Oh, for crying out loud, the clip needed to come off. <laughs> okay, let's start over. Not sure I like that. Okay, we'll clip it on. Just one second here. Okay, right in the middle of this, I had to run outside for a cat emergency. Our, uh, our young cat Draper, who doesn't visit me in my shop anymore, caught a chipmunk, which made my wife go berserk. And uh, but it's okay. I managed to actually actually the chipmunk actually scurried up the brick wall of our house, up to the uh, overhang, and the cats, uh, both cats, got two cats out there looking for him. They didn't realize he was up there. I managed to get him into a bucket and then, uh, without the cats realizing what I'm doing, uh, let the uh, let the little chipmunk go in a safe area. So, boy oh boy, excitement, Draper, one way or another. Now, back to the radio, which I just had to run out of my shop on. <laughs> okay, so I got the clip lead connected properly. Let's try this again. So we're at 262. We'll turn up the signal. That's better. That's better. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Let's turn up a little higher. Now you can see the meter reacting now as I tune through. There we go. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So we'll turn this and tune my... Uh, signal generator here and watch the meter and when it's maximum maximum I made up my own word there and there we are and we read it 261 that's pretty much 262 so what I'm gonna do is leave it set there and try adjusting the uh, IF transformers um, it's a very very small slot I'm going to use a metal screwdriver, which you shouldn't do. As I approach the tuning thing, we can watch the meter and see if it's being thrown off. So, I'm going to win on this one. Here, I'm going to have to... I'll have to try this camera here. So my hands aren't in the way. There's some static coming through the radio, which has me a little bit concerned. Okay, so you can't see my hand now. You'll have to listen to what I'm saying. I'm bringing the screwdriver up, just watch this meter, up close to the control. It makes a slight difference when I touch it. Not enough to worry about. Okay, now I'm going to adjust it. And watch this to come up to a peak. Oops, the screwdriver slipped out. Here we go. It's pretty much bang on. Okay, and I'll try the other one here now. Yeah, just so you can see what I'm up to here. So the other adjustments way down in there. And I got my eye on the meter.
made almost no difference as I made contact, so I'm not worried again about my metal screwdriver now. Adjusting. We got a little better peek out of that one. So not a dramatic change. Now the others, I've got to turn the radio over oh, for crying out loud. Set all this up. I don't like that staticky sound I'm hearing. Uh, let's turn the power off to the radio. While I do this. Okay. Not a big deal here. I've got the radio up on its side now so I can get at the bottom side of it. Bottom. Bottom of it. Back of it. Whatever it is. Light on that topic. Okay. These are a lot easier to get at. signal generator while I'm doing this. So, oh, I gotta put the power back on. That would help. Give the radio a moment. Let's see, this was driven positive right away. There we go. Just waiting for it to settle down. Usually, you know, good practice is you let a radio like this uh, play for 10, 15, even 20 minutes. But then I never follow those kinds of good practices. Okay. We're ready now. It looks pretty stable. We're on the 1.5 volt scale, so it's not a lot of voltage here. Um, and I'm trying to keep the signal generator signal low. I don't want to push this too high uh, while I'm doing these kinds of adjustments. So here we go. Again, uh, putting the screwdriver into place doesn't seem to throw the radio off because of the metal of the screwdriver. I get it in there. Okay, here we go. Ready? Something funny happened there. So this one's adjusted right. There's a very some funny stuff coming out of the radio. I'm not gonna worry about it. Could be because of the equipment I have connected. I don't know if you can hear the hiss that's coming and going there. Okay, so I'm getting the screwdriver into the other. Probably just my clip leads here. There, I think that's a little better. Okay, again, when I bring the screwdriver up, it doesn't do anything. Here we go. Oh, see, what was that? Uh oh, I don't like that. I'm just wiggling all my test wires. I think it's just my just my test setup. Okay, once again, back to trying to adjust this. The last IF transformer. Here we go. Small, very small variation. leave it roughly where it was. It didn't seem to be a very sensitive IF coil. So the next thing is, hook the radio up. I hardly made any improvement here. Slight, very slight improvement.
improvement. But what we'll do is we'll put a regular antenna on the radio and uh, see what it sounds like. There's more of that crackling. I'm going to remove the signal generator. Okay. There's no signal generator input. And uh, plug in the uh, connect an antenna. volume of it. Powerful. And I will tune it. Of course this, this tuning doesn't work here. Tune it with the button. Lots of stuff. Doesn't sound very good, does it? This is 680, uh, it's a comedy station. Just listening to it here. Wow, I don't know what to think of that. There's a bit of a hummy sound in it. Could be coming from the power supply, or more likely it's just interference being picked up here in my shop. There's so much interference type signals. Secondly, to my ear, this does not sound clean and clear. It sounds a little distorted, a little uh, hashy or buzzy. Um, I'll, dis I'll disconnect my meter here and just see if that makes a difference. It does make a difference. Yeah, the buzziness. The athletes start dancing in line while waiting their turn to check in. So, my thoughts for the for the finals would be to have Latin music. It seems to be something everybody gets a kick out of. And personally, I'd love to hear some, for example, Trinidadian uh, steel bands. Some steel drums. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Ah, that'd make the place rough. 
cottage in less than 10 minutes. If you're traveling on the westbound 401, we're seeing some delays as you make your way past Markham Road to McCowan Express, Kennedy Road to Victoria Park in the collector lanes. And if you're traveling on the south 404 Dot Valley, remain slow fence into the Shepherd Collectors to the 401 ramps. 401 uh, Parkway southbound, busy 401 down to Lawrence. And North Dot Valley, we're really slow already from Bloor Street up the pass. Lawrence, don't forget the base, uh, baby rather, is pretty messed up both directions between uh, Lawrence and York Mills because of uh, construction single lane only. And uh, good news, if you missed it earlier, the intersection of DuPont Spadina has been reopened. Train now at the Home Depot. I'll have your new air conditioner professionally installed from only 32 bucks a month. Terms and conditions apply. Call 1-800-HOME-DEPOT or visit homedepot.ca. Now with your forecast, meteorologist Jill Taylor. We'll have some showers at times. Slight risk of a thunderstorm through the afternoon and increasing humidity will really feel like tonight. The guaranteed high 25, 22 for the low will feel like 33 as we start Saturday. And a hot, humid weekend. Highs near 30, feeling closer to 38. Potential for some wet weather, especially Sunday. For today, the guaranteed high 25. Now it's 68 years ago. Ton, a ton of power coming out of this radio. It's really very powerful. So great. Sounds great. Yeah, it was my connection here to the AVC. <laughs> no, I didn't get a shock. <laughs> you know, sometimes you get little nervy feelings in your fingers or your wrist or something. kind of feels like a shock. Kabunk. There we are. So, I don't think I can do too much more to help this radio out. I think it's working really well. Um... I'm going to clean it all up, and uh, there we go. I'm not sure I want to try adjusting the oscillator. Maybe I will. I can't see where it's tuned right now because there's no dial on there. Here's the dial. So maybe I'll clean it all up. We'll set it all up, and we'll check and see how accurate it is. Fantastic. Hey, thanks for watching all this. <laughs> I know I'm not explaining myself as well as I could. But I'm under a little bit of pressure here to get a lot done. So, And I got the other car radio I have some ideas about, too. So, thanks. See you on the next video. Okay, so there's the radio after about a, a good hour of cleaning the bezel and the front here, the buttons and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's just about time to give this guy a try. Okay, so I got him on the power supply. Let's turn it on. Okay, and I've got, it's going to be playing out of its uh, internal uh, speaker. So, power's on, but the switch is not yet. Here, let's switch to a, a little closer view. Because, of course, only a small amount of that radio actually sticks out to be looked at. That's this part down here. Okay, all this is hidden inside the car. All you see is this nice polished up metal and the buttons. Now I've already set it so that this button moves the pointer all the way to the extreme here and this one moves it all the way to the extreme there. So that's how we'll tune the radio, something like this. We'll see how that... and then we can set, we'll set these three buttons, I'll show you how that's done too. So let's turn it on. Cross your fingers. Okay, you can hear the uh, vibrator working away inside there. Of course, the tuning doesn't work still. But I did get a comment. I did get a comment that on some of these radios, you, you push in to engage the tuning. And when you let go, it disengages the tuning because if, if the tuning doesn't disengage here, then when you push these buttons, this knob would fly around. And so the manufacturer has figured out a way around that. Now, in, turn, in fact, this button does move in and out. But even when it's pushed in, it still doesn't engage. So I don't know if that's a defect. This pushing in and out is a defect or if that's how it was really intended. I, I suspect that is how it was intended. So you push in, tune, and when you let go, it would be probably spring-loaded and, and pop back out. And somehow it's just not working at all. But we can do this.
Okay, we'll go down to the other end of the band here. Oop. but that could just be that particular station. We'll, we'll try another one in a minute. So, to set a button on this radio, there's a bit of a trick to it. You have to push, first push it to the side, then you pull it out, and push it the wrong way. Push it to the side, pull it out, and try it again. There we go. Push it to the side, pull it out, now you need the radio tuned exactly on where you want it. Okay, there we are. Now you just shove this back in. And now this button is memorized for there. Okay, let's see if we can pick up another station here. button for 590. We'll try and pick up 640 here. Hey, it sounds like a car engine running. And a turn off. Ew. Yeah, it was never a thing. If need be. Well, thank you all. Appreciate it, uh, Heather. Back with us next week, Patrick as well. Bray's got a news update, and then the producers are in. Look, have a great weekend. Oops. Okay, so. Manager John One. Two. Three. I should read to you what it says in the manual here about the push buttons. Because it's kind of interesting. Of course, today everyone's concerned about uh, cell phones and distracted driving. But certainly not back in the 50s where they worried about distracted driving. So, can you see that there's a bolt here? It is recommended that these buttons be kept in tune at all times by readjustment when necessary. Push button tuning is a safe driving feature so that the set may be tuned while watching the road. So, <laughs> see, even back in the 50s, there was concern about the distraction caused by radios and reaching over and, and you know, working the tuning knob to try to pick up a station. So the push buttons were actually a safety feature. Not so much a convenience, but a safety feature. And probably regulators and whatnot were watching this stuff as it was developing. And there was probably some accidents that were related back to people f fiddling around with their radio when it was a new thing in a car. And uh, bingo. Now, this garbled sound has really got me very concerned. I don't know what to make of that, where it came from. 
darn, darn it all. Can you see where the garble's coming from? <laughs> Sure, this thing was not garbled uh, until I've got it all back assembled again. But at the moment, I really don't know what to do about it, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it as is and uh, post my videos and uh, see if there's any comments about it. I mean, I think this is called intermodulation uh, interference or distortion. I think I'm not sure. But this is a common sound you hear in radios, this garbling. Boy, I'm not anxious to take it all apart again, believe me. <laughs> so there we are for now. Hey, let's go fiddle around with the other car radio.